What's up, everybody? It's LG Set here. You're listening to The First Mint, a podcast where I talk about NFTs in the world of Web3. The podcast comes out every Monday morning and occasionally on Wednesdays. If you like this content and you want some more, feel free to visit our Twitter page at The First Mint. As you guys may know, I've been on the hunt for a guest. A guest who can come on the show and talk openly about market conditions right now, and maybe somebody who's been there before, who's been through different, well, NFT cycles. There haven't been that many, but maybe through different crypto cycles and can give us some reassuring words or honestly, some tough medicine, some tough love. And I appreciate everybody who's offered because last week on the show, I expressed that I had asked several people to come on the show and that none of them were willing to come on or ready to come on. So I appreciate everybody who offered. I circled back around this week to some of those guests and still they were hesitant. I've been hankering for a good guest to talk about this current kind of bear downturn for a few different reasons. One, you know, I think we should get somebody else's perspective. Although, you know, if you go on Twitter, on crypto Twitter, there are plenty of perspectives. But I want somebody else's perspective on the show. But another reason is that doing solo podcasts is kind of time consuming. It takes a while to write these. It's also mentally challenging. I'm a bit self-conscious writing these solo pods. And it's not like a, a confidence thing. It's more so that I just hope that what I'm saying is useful and that has some impact for the people listening and that I'm also not horribly wrong or worse yet, horribly tone deaf. But although last week's show about trust in the space uh, was generally well received and thank you for everybody who gave feedback and also shared the collections that they were holding on to, I may have come off a little tone deaf this week to some people, although I think it was true. I still stand by it with a tweet that I wrote on Twitter. The tweet said, now is the time to purge your NFTs. There's a general anxiety in the community. There may be fewer people here in a month. So it's never been a better time to stockpile cash, ditch dead weight, and prepare for the long haul. Future is bright, but present needs to be ugly to get there. Some people, they didn't like that. And I've been writing and thinking a lot about this topic, about the, the bear market, the downturn, because we've never really existed as First Mint in an extended period of NFT cool down. And personally, I haven't really been investing in trading for very long. So really, who am I to even be offering any kind of guidance on market downturns? I've only been there so many times. It could be a little amateurish for me to do that. But I do know that in my short time here in two years, I do know the feeling of looking at your portfolio, thinking, wow, that's a lot of money. And then suddenly, over the course maybe of a couple of days, not having that anymore. Only to then wait a bit and tell myself, hey, it's going to bounce back. We're going to get that bounce. It'll come back. But knowing deep down that it won't or can't. And then sitting around and watching it sink even deeper. Now, we're at another down cycle, and this one is potentially way worse than the small ones we've seen, the blips we've seen in the last like year or two years. And maybe it's time to take that medicine, or at least for myself. You know, I'm down and I'm purging where I can. It's really hard to do that. NFTs are down bad. I'm down bad in some places, and I like the NFTs that I have. So it's it's you know again, it is a bit of self advice. But it doesn't change the fact that people don't really want to hear that message. People don't want to hear that it could and likely will sink more, that the industry will struggle, that a recession is coming, and that these may be the riskiest assets of all. I mean, like crypto, so risky. And within crypto, NFT is probably the riskiest. It could be these assets that are hit the hardest. And that this is, in fact, very potentially our first real NFT winter. And it could last years. So the thing I put on Twitter, my tweets, there were some positive responses, yes, but privately some very negative ones. I was, in fact, warned by others not to say that. So today's show, I'm not going to keep feeding hard medicine. Rather, I think we can use this show to be a little bit more optimistic, or rather than optimistic, maybe that's too much, constructive, let's say. Because we all know, and we, we've heard this many times in all the different Web3, Web2, whatever, all that stuff, we know that the absolute best stuff, the best applications are built during bear markets. Once those investments have come in, 
that the training gets a big a bit stagnant that is when some really magical stuff takes place that's where innovation comes from but as collectors what are we supposed to do beyond just trading and collecting there must be something for us to do so today's show is about what you me as collectors what we can do during the nft winter or a NFT winter. Let's not call this an NFT winter yet. Let's say during a NF an NFT winter, a NFT winter. What we can do during that time to pass the time. And more importantly, how we can contribute to all of this. So that when NFTs do come back, when they do rise again, we can feel like we helped. And we have helped. And we can feel like we were really part of it. This is the first minute. off the show today is a holiday in canada and when you work in crypto i think you kind of forget about holidays but if you are in canada and you're celebrating victoria day i hope it has been a fantastic long weekend for you our american friends i hope you're ready for your long weekend this coming weekend and international friends well i just hope you're taking some time off you deserve it this week at the first mint the Wednesday live show is back. We had our first episode back last weekend and it, or last week on Wednesday, and it was awesome. You can catch it on YouTube if you want to watch, or even it's literally the last podcast in the feed if you just scroll down. We had a fantastic combo to kick it off with Quadzilla and Corporate Trash, and the, the conversation actually veered more into the, the area of brands in the space and how one drop can almost like ruin a brand's reputation, kind of like the apes in their land sale, right? Like what impact does that have to the overall equity of the brand? And we tried to find comparables for that in the, you know, in, in real life, in, in non-crypto industries. When does a brand have a huge drop where everything matters for that drop? So some of the stuff we came up with were like sneaker drops, uh, Apple releases, like tech releases, or even movie releases where a lot has been put into this one release and if the movie bombs then the whole thing is a bomb and the studio loses a bunch of money kind of similar you can watch it on youtube like i said if you want to see us we also have uh cory from a project called martian premier league for the second half of the show this wednesday on the live show we have our old friend arsenic the super collector the whale he is back and we're going to be going through a bunch of hypothetical flow projects if you follow the first minute on twitter you saw that we were doing a giveaway the other day for 200 flow on on behalf of flow blockchain and what we asked you guys to do is actually come up with your best hypo hypothetical profile picture project on flow and we're going to go through the best responses this is going to be judged by the real phil d so that's going to be this week on the first mint live it's wednesday at five o'clock pacific eight o'clock eastern and one last little bit of news for the first mint if you're watching this on youtube right now that's right i'm recording these podcasts you can watch me on youtube you will notice i am wearing this beautiful the first mint hat and you can get one of these or some shirts from the first mint or a hoodie or a beanie you can go to shop.thefirstmint.com. And you know what? I actually have a little discount code just for you guys, just for our listeners. The discount code and the store is actually only up for this week. It's only up for another week. We only have it for two weeks. It's a limited run of merch. So if you're keen to get yourself a little t-shirt or whatever, head on over there, shop.thefirstmint.com. The discount code will get you 20% off anything you want. It's only good for the first 150 people who head over there so if you're listening to this early in the morning i mean it'd be great if 150 people use this code honestly the code that you're going to use at checkout for 20 percent off any of the shirts beanies whatever is one word what's up everybody no apostrophe after between the t and the s so w-h-a-t-s-u-p-e-v-e-r-y-b-o-d-y what's up everybody is the discount code if you have any issues just shoot us a dm at the first mint this week only first uh, first mint merch now on to the topic of the day which is what you and me can do during an nft winter if we are in an nft winter what are we going to do and how can we help so let's level set a little bit and talk about builders in the space because you know in the teaser i talked about how this is when the best ideas get built. This is when innovation happens is during when things are cold and, you know, people are wondering if they should be in the space or not. That is when people kind of backs against the wall, kind of come up with some of the best stuff. And the premise for this is that 
there's a lot of money out there for people to build. Some of our friends, some of our favorite projects have gotten, even just this past week, have announced funding. Evaluate Market, our old, our, our awesome tool for Top Shot and many other NFTs, they announced a funding round of another $4 million. Jenkins the Valet, a fantastic kind of uh, a side ape project that's based on one of the board apes, but that's going to be making a, a book and, and movies and all wonderful stuff about Jenkins, the, the valet, who is a, a ape, who is a, a, a valet in the board ape yacht club. They announced a round of funding of twelve million dollars, and Flow announced like almost eight hundred million dollars in ecosystem funding. So, and that's just like a little morsel of all the money that is coming into the space. A lot of it led by the company A sixteen Z. Uh, which is a huge investor, a huge VC investor in the space. Just go Google, just go Google NFT investments uh, and you'll see like just how much stuff is getting funded right now. So we know that builders are getting their cash and that they are getting set up to build. Even Dapper, uh, outside of the Flow Fund, um, you know, obviously there's the Top Shot score this past week and, and a lot of mixed reactions there. Top Shot kind of like the guinea pig project of the ecosystem. But we know that we're in store for a lot more coming there and that over the next couple of years, the ecosystem of the Dapper wallet and the Flow blockchain, especially with all that money, is going to be built out and, and hopefully look like something really fantastic, right? If you zoom out from there, Dapper and all these other projects are all gunning for kind of the same thing, which is to be the crypto thing that puts NFTs in people's hands first. They want to put NFTs in people's hands who do not have NFTs right now. And doing that over the next couple of years, even if it takes a couple of years or even just a couple of months, that might not be very lucrative for current traders, right? Like, I don't know if there's a way to profit uh, or even trade your way through or whatever it is. Not that you have to look to profits for projects. We've talked, we've had that conversation. Um, but, you know, thinking about the bull run of the last year and a half, uh, this building phase is going to look very different. And maybe it's a good time to start looking at NFTs as something non-lucrative. Because, of course, there's money involved and people can make money. Yes, we know that. But to survive this as collectors... Unless you really want to grind away and trade things all the time and get into like OK Bears and not OK Bears or whatever, unless you want to do that really grind, this might not be as fun, right? And a lot of the projects still coming out now, they're still all kind of the same. Keep in mind, again, the NFT world has gone through the most incredible bull run. It made NFTs mainstream. It made normal people hate the industry. I hate NFTs for the butt end of every joke. We know now what projects are good. We know what works and what doesn't. And we know that those good projects have doubled down with funding and they're kind of on to their second phase now. I don't think we'll see many more summers like last year where there's so much money to be made. But it's a great time to be in. There are a lot of creatives coming in. They're going to work at a lot of these companies with all this funding. That, that funding is going to go to hire some of the best in the business at all those different businesses. So here's the alpha part for us as just collectors. If things do stay slow for a while, we're going to see a lot of really fantastic talent and great ideas being built with kind of little fanfare and very little mooning. But if we stay true to our ideals, maybe we'll get to scoop those up. Maybe we'll be curious about those projects and get in on them first, the ones that are truly different. Not to say it's all about profit, but hey, everybody likes being early, whether you're there to make money or just to say you want, you're you there early. The opportunities for the very keen and savvy collector over the next couple of years will be, I think, quite abundant. So long as we're disciplined, we do our own research. When NFTs boom again, which could be very soon, who knows, it's going to look different. And honestly, I think it's going to look a lot better, which is great. And I think for me as a collector and even as a content creator, I can't wait to see these new projects, but I think about what else can I contribute as a non-founder, no funding. And let's say I, I wasn't a content creator. I didn't have a platform here. How can I actively be part of Crypto Winter and contribute? And then just say I was there the whole time when things come back. So here's the list. Here's the list of ways we can contribute to NFTs. We're well into the podcast now. You guys know I like my list. So I, I, I kind of just write everything like it's an internet article from 2009, like 10 reasons, blah, 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 blah. That's, I, I kind of just write everything as clickbait, even though it's a podcast. So this is the list of ways, the 10 ways, let's say, that we can contribute to NFTs during an NFT winter. I'm not going to say the NFT winter, okay? I don't know if it's an NFT winter, but during a NFT winter. Number one, some of these are basic, but some of these are a little more juicy. 
Number one, engage in everything. A lot of these projects, these new ones, old ones, whatever, they're looking for feedback. Even if it's totally unsolicited, even if it's just emoji reactions to the posts in Discord, I think it's a good time to take time every day to go check those discords, write something, say something, engage with whatever the content is that's coming out, reply to people's tweets. That base layer of communication is vital for the whole thing. If, even if there isn't huge NFT volume, if there is a lot of volume of conversation, then that's very good. So get out there and like, tweet, retweet, emoji like, whatever it is. Number two. Join a DAO and vote on stuff. DAOs have kind of taken a back seat. They're not as sexy or as lucrative as, you know, a lot of other stuff in crypto. But there's so much there. Everybody that kind of reads about what DAOs are is like, hey, that, that, that could work in some way, right? And that's a place you can still engage. Social tokens, we were part of the C Club, and we know that social tokens are, are coming and have come in a lot of ways and that they, they unlock a lot of access to communities and a... And a kind of quantifying of communities in a way that we're not really doing right now in real life. You can go participate in these, in these DAOs. And I really believe that there will be a DAO that actually does change something significant, either about the industry or maybe even the world or both. I think it's helpful for everybody to know how they work and how they as individuals can contribute and be part of those DAOs. So go find one, go find one you like, start tracking it, start working in the DAO, you can do that and earn some of their little tokens. You can do that right now. That being said, let's go to point number three, which is purge deadweight communities. And I don't mean that the communities are bad. I don't mean that there are, there are deadweight communities. I'm saying for you personally, for me personally, we know that community is the, the key term in crypto. It's a little bit overused. And now is a good time to maybe cut the ones that you're not as interested in. The ones that you don't like, you're not feeling as much, the ones where you don't do point number one, which is engage. And double down on the really incredible ones, or the ones that you feel. My tweet about purging, well, maybe that wasn't just about NFTs. Maybe it was about where you spend your time. It's a good time now to refocus on what you think really matters. Again, if you're going to be engaging, might as well do it in places where you see a long-term future. Number four, get educated and give feedback. Go beyond engaging, read everything, watch everything, find new people to follow. Let the creators know what you like and don't like. It helps them get better. And I mean just that, even for people who just write blog posts and make videos, let them know what you want to see more of or what you want to see less of. And that also helps like the algorithm. Don't forget, we're in like a very highly evolved content ecosystem right now. The stuff that you watch on YouTube, that you search and click on, all that kind of stuff, that matters. And it's the kind of stuff where you're getting educated, I'm getting educated, we're all getting educated that will push the good stuff to the top so it can get out there a lot more. Number five, let the builders or potential creatives that you know in real life to get their asses in here. We need strong creatives. We need really imaginative builders in the space. We need those people that you guys know, you know them in real life. They look at things a little bit differently. Hit them up. Get them in here. Get them in the space. Help educate them. Help inspire them. Introduce them to a project you think they might like. Like I have a buddy from college. He writes TV shows now, and he and I always love comic books kind of together. And I used to I used to make fun of him for for how much he loved Battlestar Galactic. Anyways, I've been desperately trying to get him into certain projects about comic books, like Huxley or Pixel Vault or even Martian Premier League. He's a creative guy, and we need people like that to come in here and look at the industry and think about, like, hey, what can I do with that? How does that apply to my medium and my skill set? If you know those people, find that little way in for them. Number six, collect resources and share them. And this kind of this kind of goes across some of the other points. But, I mean, going beyond just alpha groups and wallet aggregators, go deep into what you like about the industry and... Make a list of those resources and have them ready to share. Personally, I love reading articles on Forefront.Market. It's all about DAOs and communities. It has a lot of the philosophical stuff behind crypto and what it's supposed to be all about, especially, again, the community side. Personally, I've been sharing these resources with old acquaintances and, and some of the brands that I know that are kind of sniffing around in the space. I've been explaining to them the benefits of things, of strategies like going to market via community. And sharing these types of articles and sites with them. 
so that hopefully, you know, these brands or anybody who's coming in, they can get that education first. They get those resources first. And they'll get a better sense of how to navigate the space. And maybe for some of those brands, start stop placing Instagram ads for their product. <laughs> Number seven, make content. There's only 10 here, so, so we're almost there. Number seven that you can do in an NFT winter is make content. Even if you've never thought about getting yourself out there as a creator, we want to see your tweets. Start low lift. Keep it easy. Don't, don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't commit to doing a whole podcast series without ever having done a podcast. Try one or two first. And follow and maybe even emulate the stuff that you like. Be anonymous if you want. It doesn't matter. Get your hot takes out there. And again, it doesn't have to be the highest performing content. Just because it isn't doesn't mean it's not worth making. So make some content. Get out there. Number eight. Push for critical feedback. And we already do this so well as a community. I've always said that the entire NFT community is kind of like its own little DAO where we do we do impact change you know, for these projects. They do listen to what people are saying and people do kind of vote with their wallets. We need to push for, for better utility, way beyond the stuff that we get now from these projects. And we need to push for transparency. We need to take all those learnings about what blockchain should be and hold our favorite projects accountable to that. We're doing a great job already, and we need to keep doing that, even when things are not as hot. Number nine, push for a deeper sense of identity beyond profile photos. Who are we as collectors? Think about that. Who are you as an NFT collector? What are you? What kind of collector are you? Over time, that's going to fracture. We're going to be a lot of different types of people here in a lot of different communities. I was reading an article on Decrypt which is a, a, a crypto publication in an interview with people asking him like, where are things going? And he, they said that he predicts a fracturing of the NFT space. And I quote people here from, from the decrypt interview to the point where it feels less like a singular space and much more like a group of communities, much like you don't hear people say, I love web pages or I hate web pages. He's talking of course about NFT communities and how, NFT projects and communities are going to split off into all these different portions of the industry. And we won't just refer to it or to ourselves as one big community anymore. We're going to be a lot of different segments. So it's a good time now to think about which of those do you want to be part of? How is it fragmenting? What kind of collector are you? How do you want to collect over the next couple of years? And start digging into that spot. And the last point, the last way to, you know, last thing to do in your prep for an NFT winter, if we are on the brink of one, or maybe we're not, is treat all of this like a real community. Whatever community you're in, if you're in the big community, like I said, or you've already fractionalized into small ones, actually approach it like a real community. What do you do in a community? What do you contribute? You build it. You're part of it. You do random acts of kindness. You help people in need. You organize fundraisers, charity events. You attend meetings. You organize cleanups. I don't know what that would be in NFTs, obviously, what a cleanup would be, but you know what I mean. The term community, yes, is quite overused. So I, I try to use it sparingly, and I have used it a lot in this podcast. But for Crypto Winter, honestly, it might be we all we have for a while. So it's worth digging into it and investing not just your money, but some of your time into that space. We'd love to hear your thoughts. If we are at an NFT winter right now, let me know. I want to know how you are preparing, or at least how you have changed, how your, your strategy has changed, let's say in these last two weeks, as the town downturn has gone down and you're probably down bad or maybe not, but maybe you're down bad like me or other people. I want to hear from you because uh, I always love hearing how people are doing because I'm not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. First Mint's going to be here. If it's a long winter, we will be here and we're buckling down. And as you can tell, we're looking for stuff to do too during this time. So I want to hear from you guys. So let me know. And that is going to do it for us today, folks. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, like I said, Wednesday, we have a fantastic show with Arsenic, so make sure you tune in on the First Myth.